Hello, Pisces. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Pisces is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free, doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Pisces, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And here is a Three of Swords. This is sometimes the card of sorrow, sometimes the card of heartbreak. I feel like we are stuck in uh, a memory. Yeah, I feel like we are kind of, um, we keep reliving something over and over again. Something that's preventing us from moving forward in life. It's a blockage. Yeah. We're going to put this into some context. Okay, that's not a bad place to start because at least we recognize that that's kind of where we are. Yeah. And we can we can do something about that. Now we have a princess of wands. We've got an ace of wands. The star card. We've got the depth of emotion with the queen of cups. And we've got a five. The five of swords is interesting with the three of swords because if this is where we're kind of stuck, if this is what we keep reliving, it's, it's almost like a Groundhog's Day kind of thing. We keep reliving the same event over and over again, and it continues to injure us, right? This is us doing something about that. This is something we can control. This is movement. This is change. We can easily change this up to an upright pentagram, right, rather than an averse pentagram. So I think that's a really good combination of energy. Now we're going to continue. Four of Cups. Oh, an Eight of Pentacles. Now we've got the Death card. That's very interesting. And the Empress. Wow. The transformation of a lifetime, right? This is, a, this is being reborn. This is a new birth into this Empress energy. That is really a spectacular ending. I'm very excited about that. Um, this seemed kind of like it was going to be a struggle, but we're going to get we're going to be okay. We've got a four of cups. We're going to stabilize this energy. We're going to get away from that storm. That's a storm that you're not actually in. You were, but we keep reliving that same experience over and over and over again. Maybe it was a breakup. Maybe it was the loss of a loved one. Um, and this is the idea now that we're away from that storm. Things are settled. We are okay. Well, more than that, we're being reborn into this paradise, into this land of milk and honey. This is real beauty and joy and love, real abundance, real healing, right? This is you being reborn into your best life. Now, this is a best life that you much must nurture and nourish if it's going to nurture and nourish and heal you, okay? You're going to get what, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Okay, and that's the Eight of Pentacles that we see over here. Yeah. You've got to take care of this, and it will take care of you. Okay. Now, for some of you, it might be, um, it might be a younger, I feel that there's a younger female energy maybe that has passed in your life. Um, not recently, but maybe a few years. I mean, it's still recent, right? Um, something happened with that younger female energy. And I feel like we keep recreating that. It keeps kind of happening again and again. And I don't know why, but September is a very important month for you. I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe something happened in September. Maybe that's some birthday or anniversary. But I feel like it's a younger female energy. And I think that we keep reliving some experience that happened with that person. Maybe for some of you that person has passed. Maybe not. Okay. It could be a child, it could be a grandchild, it could be, um, could be a younger sibling. Uh, this is something that's deeply personal to you. This is something that is really, uh, has been 
holding you back from your best life, from your best self, okay? And what we're realizing through this air energy is that we have the power to control our thoughts. We can pull ourselves out of this three of swords, out of this memory. We're not chained here. It may feel like it, but we can pull ourselves out of this. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some intentional action. And, you know, you've got this fire energy beneath you to fuel all of this, right? And um, furthermore, I think the Princess of, of Wands is, um, is us getting back out there again. This is us taking risks with life. This is us, and maybe, maybe you just had a bad experience. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling that there was an accident or something that happened, right? A while ago, maybe last September, possibly. Um, yeah, I guess that'd be about, yeah, about five months ago. Um, I feel like it's preventing us from wanting to, to try again. It's like we, we've fallen off the bicycle. We don't want to get back on. And I don't blame you, right? You fall down on a bike, you get hurt. You don't want to ride a bike again. I'm done with bicycles. Um, this is the car that's saying we need to. We need to get back on the horse. Something bad happened to us. That's okay. We need to, we need to accept it, um, process it in whichever way we can. I'm not saying let go of it. I'm not saying forget about it. It's a memory. It's always going to be part of you. But the blessing here is that we have the power to continue forward in life. And if this was a loss of a loved one, they want you to move forward. Okay? If this was an accident that happened to you and something that has now put you in this mode of not wanting to take any risks, not you don't want to go outside now because something bad might happen to you, we have the power. That's the blessing that we have from the divine is our ability to choose. Okay? Now, for that five of swords, I want to do. I want to do a botanical inspiration card. It's kind of an affirmation card, and uh, I feel that this will be a good counteracting force for that five of swords. Because if we think about things negatively, if we think that we are defeated, that we are um, the underdog, that we are weaker than, that's what we will be. If we think that we can overcome things, if we think positively, that's what we will be. It just depends on how we place this card, right? So we've got the white rose, new start and wisdom. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Well, like I said at the beginning, this is a good card to start with because once we know that this is what's going on, then we can make the choices to move forward. Then we can really count our blessings, receive our blessings, and move forward. This is a big, big change in your life. From what's going on here with this air energy, this is a big, big change. And this is really, this is a deep emotional situation for you. And I feel like what you're aspiring to with the Queen of Cups is swimming to the top of this. You're looking to get out of this depth, okay? And we really want the light of day. We really want the sunshine, the beauty. We want the warm, warm world around us. Yeah. Because down here, it feels, it feels cold. It feels like we've, we're too low in this. We're too deep in this feeling. And it's time now, I think, to start climbing out of this. And we kind of see with the fire underneath, it's kind of like we're boiling the water a little bit. And things are starting to churn up. Things are starting to get active. And maybe there was something recent, uh, uh, you know, like literally in the last day or two, that kind of triggered this memory. That kind of puts you down in this mode again. Right? And that could be the Ace of, of Wands underneath here that created just enough heat to kind of fire water, make a little bit of steam. Right? And we're now in this air energy. Um, but let's use this ace of wands as a flotation device, as a buoy, right, to help bring us to the top, to bring us to the surface of this thing. And that's kind of where we are with the four of cups. This is us at the surface. Now, what's the star card back here? Well, I feel like this is the trust that you have in the universe. I feel like this is your, well, this is the divine blessing. 
Okay, and it may not. We may not always understand what the purpose is in the world, or what the um, what the plan is. We may not understand the divine. We may not understand spirit. I think rarely do we really understand what is going on, right? Um, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom, right? We have to know what we're doing, what what our role is. If we're to understand the bigger picture, we have to first understand ourselves and what we're doing. Are we trying to live in harmony with the world and with the process of change, or are we stuck somewhere? Like it kind of feels here. Um, I think that we do get glimpses of the bigger picture. And I feel like you need to get back to that. I feel like you have a very intense spiritual practice. We need to get back to it. Okay. Um, I feel like you're even like a, a natural kind of mystic, a natural like psychic or an intuitive or like a medium even. And I feel as if this air energy, the swords here, have kind of interfered with that a little bit. And so if we change that, if we can clear out some of this air energy, then we can receive this divine light once again. Yeah. And um, I feel like you, you, you burn a lot of incense. You're someone that, that needs that. Um, I don't know if you're doing sage or sandalwood. What are you burning right now? Um, and I say this, I think I say this quite often with Pisces. It feels like you, you've always got something going, whether it's at an altar, it's incense, whether you're smudging, whether you're, I don't know if you're smoking. Um, there's always something that's, that's going on, right? Um, and I, I feel like it is, it is a cleansing, consecrating energy that you're trying to invoke. And I think it's important that we see it. It might be that we're lighting our incense just out of routine. Well, let's focus for a second on why we're doing that. What is the intention of the incense, of the smoke, of the aroma, right? Um, the incense is meant to be an offering to, to spirit, to deity, right? Um, it is meant to rise upward. The, the aroma, the smoke rises up to spirit, to heaven, right? If you want to call it that. And um, there's also this sim the symbolism of us clearing the smoke, right? Using our breath. The breath is the spirit. The breath is the mind. The breath is the air energy, uh, the swords, right? Using our breath to clear the incense smoke out of the room, um, out of our aura, allowing us to sl see clearly, okay? Very symbolic here, this incense, or whatever smoke it is. Okay. Um, we have to clear that fog out of our vision, okay? So we can see what the divine plan is. So we can see the sun at the top, at the surface of the water here. Yeah. Now, I feel like someone around you has an issue with their hips. Um, I almost feel like you have an, a dog, a larger breed of dog that has hip problems. Like the, um, what is it that larger dogs, the hip uh, dysplasia? I feel like there's something with the dog there, yeah. Uh, sometimes these details come in as synchronicities, as confirmations of the energy that we're in. Uh, if those details aren't meant for you, don't worry about it. All right, leave them for the next person. But the idea here is that we clear the confusion, we clear our minds, we clear our heads, we empty our minds, really. And we allow spirit to fill us up with the blessings, the divine blessings, the insight, the certainty, the clarity, right? Ask and you shall receive knock and it shall be opened unto you. Um, if we clear a space in our aura, spirit will fill it, right? If we empty ourselves, spirit will fill us. And I think this is what we really need right now as a way to push forward through this. Now, a big portion of that is your own will. This is the ace of wands underneath the surface. Right. This is your pure consciousness, your pure will. And I feel like this is the intention with which you are connecting with your environment in a way that is healthy and supportive and is empowering to you. 
reach out to those people in your life that empower you. Not only the people, the pets, the plants, the locations. Let's select the mystery card. This is the bonus card, confirmation card. It's a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. And we're just going to set it down right here. We're going to put Jimbo, the Lizard King, right there on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together. And it will give us the uh, confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. Now, if at any point during this tarot card reading you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments. Let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise of intuition. All right. Now, where were we? Um, we've got Major Arcana with the Star, the Death, and the Empress. That's a pretty nice progression. This is the spiritual will, the plan. This is your destiny, your fate. This is the, the guiding light in your life. This is you following your star, following your star light, your load star. It's a lighthouse in, the, in this ocean for you. And where that leading is leading you is toward processing, letting go, and moving forward into your best life. Now, your life is about to drastically change if we look at these three cards. This is the certainty. This is you realizing that this change is upon you and we are transitioning from here to Empress. Or even from here, from the depths of this situation to this abundant, abundant earth energy. This nourishing, supportive life that you have to nurture and nourish and support as well. Right? You're going to get out of it what you put into it. And the Five of Swords, like I said, is, the, is our ability to, to change, to control how we think. It's not easy. It takes willpower. These two cards together are the essence of meditation and prayer. Using our willpower. And we need the willpower because it's a difficult process to control our thoughts. To direct our thoughts toward this certain something and not that certain something. That's meditation, right? To confine your mental energy to a particular space, whether it's to one single point or to a general kind of theme, right? When you meditate, you can either meditate on the sensation of breathing, very kind of one pointed, if it's a very small point, or generally on the idea of love and abundance and all of its different manifestations. You are setting the boundaries for what you're, you're allowing your mind to um, explore, okay? And that's meditation. And so this is, in a very simple way, going from negative thoughts to positive thoughts, positive affirmations. Let's do another one while we're here. Let's do one from the language of flowers. Yeah. Let's do one of these. We've got the white rose. We've got the new start, wisdom, knowing yourself is the beginning, right, of all wisdom. The African violet, spirituality. It's time to connect with what you believe. And like I said, I feel like you've had, you have a very strong spiritual practice, but I feel like we haven't been focused on that. But that's exactly what you need right now, you know, to realize the blessings that we have and to move our mental energy from where it is dwelling right now, okay? And that's going to take us to the path of the serpent. As we talk about these cards, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, and it really helps out the channel, and I really appreciate that. Okay, so the Four of Cups. We talked about that getting kind of getting... Um, rising up out of the depths of this water, and here we are on the surface of the water. Things are okay. We're floating here. The storm is kind of behind us, or it's you know, still close, but we're, we're out of danger, right? But this car doesn't have a lot of direction. This car needs a rudder, needs an engine, needs a sail. At least needs like a paddle, right? And what better paddle than our willpower, right? We have a four, we add an ace, we get five. We get the five of whatever, maybe five of cups. We get movement. This is something, this, it's like a hot, hot, really like a blazing hot, red hot iron rod that you stir the pot with, right? And it really causes some motion here. And it causes a lot of these feelings to be processed, 
maybe it comes to the surface in a very kind of agitated way and it, it boils off, but it's, we're, we're processing that stuff. Yeah, we're, we're moving through this water now. Now we're on the surface of it and we're using it to propel our ship forward in life. And I think this is very, very good energy. Um, now, I, I was seeing the dog with the hip thing, but did you, you have an ankle problem? I don't know. I feel like someone's, you're wearing a brace or something on your leg. Yeah. It's not the dog. I feel like it's, it's you or it's someone close to you. Um, so I'm wondering if there was maybe an accident in the last couple of months or so. Because I feel like you're still having the foot or ankle issues. Yeah. Um, the Eight of Pentacles is about healing. It's about paying attention to the details. It's kind of a card that says, look, if you, um, uh, um, what, what is the saying here uh, in the UK? Um, you take care of the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. I think that's how it goes. We focus on the details. We focus on those little things that we can do right now to start to direct our mental energy toward beauty and blessings and love and light and healing. Those little things. Right? Focusing on the incense, focusing on your spiritual practices, your meditation, focusing on taking care of the dog, healing your foot, whatever it is. Um, if we do these little things, spirit will take care of the big things. Yeah. So, in some ways, this is a drastic change in your life. And this is not one big leap from here to here, or from here to here, right? It's not one big leap that you have to make. It's a lot of small steps. The day-to-day -day routine, the daily grind is what really gets results. Consistent effort over time creates these huge, unbelievably great outcomes. Yeah. In whatever situation, or maybe this is a work thing, Maybe this is family. Maybe this is something to do with a loved one. Um, whatever the situation is, whatever this, whatever this is that you are reliving over and over again, could be a breakup, like I said, whatever it is. It could be the loss of a job even, you know. It's the consistent effort to always try to, anytime we find ourselves wandering back into that, the depth of that water energy and that three of swords, let's make an effort to, to turn this over, at least for a minute. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fall back this way at some point. We just do it again. That's the key to meditation. And that's the key to any kind of focused energy in life. Is to first of all, be aware to know yourself, Right? And to be able to see when things have gone back this way. So we can say, oh, no, 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 you don't. And then, oh, it's going again. Nope, stay over here. And that's all it is. It's just constantly trying to bring it back to where you intend it to be, where you are willing it to be. Your mental energy, your focus, your, your attention, um, your spirit, yeah, your consciousness. So the, anyway, the eight of pentacles, uh, it's healing. It's those little things that you can do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis that are promoting health and well-being, that are empowering you. It's like, how do you build willpower? Well, you do it one little thing at a time. You just say, okay, every day at five o'clock, I'm going to just say a quick prayer in my heart, you know? And then every day at five o'clock, you just do it. And then eventually get to the point that everything you kind of intend to do everything you tell yourself you're going to do, you do it. It becomes easier and easier, right? We're never perfect. We all falter. We all fail. We all lag. Okay. It's the consistent effort that over time creates this kind of success. Now we could be talking about anything here. We could be talking about saving money. You don't just have to wait till you have a million dollars to put in the bank. No, you save a dollar here and there, a couple of pennies, whatever you got. But consistently, we have to do it over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. And that's how we deal with this kind of change. The death card is long-term change. Slow change over time. It's not, a, it's not one giant leap. You know, it's slow and steady progress that builds this really terrific empress 
energy. This is the manifestation of everything good, everything empowering, everything that is nourishing and nurturing to your soul. It's right here. Empress, your divine blessings, really. Your life is about to drastically change, but you have to will that change into being through these small, consistent efforts. Yeah, take care of the pennies. The pounds will take care of themselves. Let's take a look at that mystery card. I wonder if this is going to be the Empress again, if it will maybe be the Emperor, right? Because the Emperor would kind of represent your efforts in this situation. You're putting your will and intention into something, and in return, it's going to be taking care of you. And there's this um, reciprocating energy involved. So I'm thinking Emperor. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. Let's see. Oh, well, kind of kind of close. Well, it's a queen of cups. Not really, not really that close. Um, it's really the same as this, as this card. Okay. Um, so I really feel like this is uh, some, uh, this is a situation that we are really down low into. So it takes a lot of effort to try to swim to the top. Yeah. And I think what I started to talk about before with the eight of pentacles is very important to you right now. Activate your support system. Okay, this, these divine blessings are here in your life. Your life is about to drastically get better, change for the better, right? We have the card of change into that empress energy. But we need to surround ourselves because, see, the Eight of Pentacles is the card of the environment. We need to surround ourselves with people, with places, with things, with rituals, with images that are going to empower us and support us and promote our best life to promote the kind of transformation that we want for ourselves. Okay, which again involves doing those kinds of rituals and practices and um, getting back to your spirituality if we've kind of drifted a little bit away from that. But definitely the support system, friends, family. Surround yourself with those people that empower you and promote your greatest well-being. We're going to do an extended reading. If you would like to stick around for that, there is a link at the end of the video. There's a link down in the video description, and there might even be one up there somewhere. I don't know. Uh, new readings for Pisces every Thursday and Sunday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. I'm here every day. Just come see me again tomorrow. Okay. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. And leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Let me know that you're all right. And uh, I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.